It is truly a joy to be here today to witness what is happening, to celebrate this Mass with you. I'm most grateful to all of you who have taken off this weekend to be here, also to all of those who have made it possible, our chaperones, our youth leaders, and also uh, to our priests and deacons who have chosen to be with, with us this weekend. I want to talk to you very simply this morning, and I will be addressing the following four questions. Why are you here? Why do we need to be at Mass beyond the mandate of the Church? What are we supposed to receive from going to Mass? And how do we apply what we receive from the Mass into our lived experience of daily life. So, why are you here? You're here because the Father chose you to be here. From all eternity, the Father thirsts for, thirsted for you. He thirsted for your love. He thirsted for your friendship. He thirsted for bringing you to Jesus. From all eternity, the Father thirsted to bring you closer to his son Jesus in order that someday the Father could share all eternity with you. So that's why you are here. And he is excited that you are here, and so are we. Also, the Father chooses you. And the Father loves you. And the Father wants to love you into wholeness. So, why are we here? Because we're chosen. Because we're loved. Why do you need to be here beyond the mandate of the church? I'll tell you why. It's because of the Holy Trinity's love story for you. I want to explain very simply how the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit loves you and how this Mass is a very vital part, how the Sunday Mass is a very vital part of that, of that love. Let me explain by putting it in simple terms of who the Holy Spirit really is, who the, the Holy Trinity really is. From all eternity, God the Father existed, was, is. He begot his only son and poured himself from all eternity into his son. And the son in turn pours himself totally into the father, doing the father's will. And that relationship between them is the Holy Spirit. So for all eternity, we have this community of love. The father loving the son, the son loving the father, the Holy Spirit, this community of love existing from all eternity. But there came a point in time when God decided to break out of that community of love and to create existence, to create the universe. And so the Father created the universe, he created the angels, and he created, created the saints. Or he, he, he created man. From all eternity, God the Father begot his Son and entered himself into his Son. However, when God the Father saw this tragedy, that man lost his friendship with God, God sent a rescue team to bring mankind back to him. And that rescue team is his son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And so, Christ came into this world, died on the cross, rose from the dead, sent the Holy Spirit into our lives, and formed this spacecraft which has come from the Father and is now on a return trip. So all of us are on our return trip back to the Holy Trinity. 
We're on our return trip. And that spacecraft is nothing other than Jesus, the Holy Spirit, his church, powered by the seven sacraments, and especially powered by the sacrament of reconciliation and the power of the Holy Eucharist. So, we're in this spacecraft on our return to the Father, and that is incredible good news. It's good to know where we came from, we came from the Father, and it's good to know that we're on our return in a spacecraft called the church with all the tools we need, all the power we need to get us there. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about traveling in this spacecraft, the church, on our return trip to the Holy Trinity. The fathers of the church explain it in this way. In a parable of the lost sheep, Jesus leaves the 99 and goes in search of the lost sheep. He finds there the sheep, which is all tangled in thorns. He removes the thorns from that sheep, puts it on his shoulder, and brings him back. The fathers tell us we, mankind, are that lost sheep. Jesus comes to our rescue, assumes our human nature as man, and carries us home to God. That's what he is doing in this Mass. He is taking us home to the Trinity, and I'll explain more of that later. Pope Benedict tells us that all worship is now a participation in Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. On the Palm Sunday Gospel, Jesus says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all things, all men unto myself, all people unto myself. There are several lifting ups. At the resurrection, Christ was lifted from the grave. At the ascension, Christ was lifted up from the earth. At the elevation of the host, Christ is lifted up in the Mass, and we are lifted up with him to the Father. So in the Mass, Jesus takes us and lifts us up to the Father. So in a sense, we enter into the Holy Trinity during Mass, or another way of saying it is that heaven comes down when we celebrate the Mass. The Mass is really heaven coming down to earth and lifting us up to the Trinity. When Christ lives us up to the Trinity, he gives us the power to overcome sin. How does this happen? We unite ourselves with Jesus as sinners. Remember last night, Father Jose pointed out so clearly that Jesus went in search of Zacchaeus. He knew he was a sinner, he knew he was unworthy, and he wanted to make him worthy, so he invited himself to lunch. Today, Christ has invited you to his banquet table. Why? Because he wants to take away our sins. So, what happens in Mass? He gives us the power to overcome sin. How does this happen? We unite ourselves with Jesus, even as sinners. So often, we don't think we're worthy. Of course we're not worthy. But Jesus invites us to come as we are, as Zacchaeus did, and unite ourselves with him, because when we unite ourselves with him, he offers this perfect sacrifice to the Father, and through that perfect sacrifice, he transforms our inner nature. And so we surrender we surrender our sinfulness, we surrender our wills with that of Jesus, and that offering gives us the power to overcome sin. The more we surrender our hearts and our lives with that of Jesus in the Mass, the more we experience being changed by his love. We, are, we become a different person. And that is the answer to the third question. What are we supposed to receive from the Mass? The answer is nothing less than Jesus himself. His love, his mercy, his forgiveness, his victory over sin. Remain, remember, Jesus came for sinners. 
So don't sell yourself short and say, I don't love myself enough, I don't love others enough. Of course you don't. What else is new? <laughs> Jesus knows that. And because of that, he's saying, come to me. Come to me in the Eucharist. I want to make you worthy. So what are we supposed to receive the Mass? As I said, nothing less than Jesus himself. That is why the Mass has to be a sacrifice for us. The more we make it our sacrifice, the more we experience Christ. Remember, after the offertory prayers, the celebrant says, Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. So make sure that at the offertory, you place yourself with all of your sins, with all of your lust, with all of your anger, with all of your resentment, with all of your shortcomings, with all of what you don't like about yourself. Place that on the altar so that you make a sacrifice with Jesus Christ so he has something to sacrifice to the Father. The sacrifice we make is our very lives. Just as Jesus offered his life for us, so we offer everything. We offer him our sacrifices, our sins, our failures, our difficulties, whatever we are, our shortcomings, our dislike of ourselves, we offer that all. He wants everything because he wants to transform everything into a beautiful gift for the Father. That's good news. If I don't get anything out of the Mass, it's because I'm not sacrificing myself for Jesus. So what do we receive at Mass when we surrender ourselves, including our sins? And as I mentioned, our lust, our anger, our sinfulness, our shortcomings. We receive nothing less than the Trinity himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because we are offered up to the Father. We are his, and he is ours. We pray through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So, the third question, how do we apply in our daily lives what we experience and receive at the Mass and let this affect what we are doing? Let me give you a concrete example from my own life. When I was a sophomore in high school, that was 60 years ago, which is not that long, <laughs> even though it's four times your age, <laughs> the sophomore class was scheduled to play the seniors that night, and I wanted so desperately to beat the seniors in softball. But then, before the last class, one of the professors asked me to go down to the woods and chop tomato poles for his sister's garden. So, after Mass, I was not a happy camper. Instead of going to the ball field with a bat on my shoulder, I went with an axe past the ball field, down into the woods, to chop tomato poles. And over and over again, I said to myself, why me? Why always me? Why not somebody else for a change? <laughs> You've never said that to yourself, but nevertheless, I did. <laughs> and suddenly I paused, and I heard this voice from Jesus say, Bob, isn't it true that every morning at Mass, you say to me, do anything to make me more worthy of receiving you? And I said, yeah, so what? And I said, oh, <laughs> you mean if I do this for you, if I chop these tomato poles for you, it'll help prepare me for the Eucharist? You got it. Well, I'll tell you, that made a profound difference in what I was doing. I chopped those tomato poles, I trimmed them reverently, and I laid them down gently because I was doing it for Jesus. And you know what? I no longer heard the cheering on the hill. And to this day, I do not know who won that ball game, but I know who won my heart because Jesus helped me connect everyday life 
with the Holy Eucharist. And that is beautiful, and that is powerful. From that instant, my life changed. I began to make the application, the connection between the Mass and my life. Remembering the Eucharist helps me to embrace the difficulties and the challenges in my life and offer them up with Jesus on the cross and in the Eucharist. It makes those challenges so worthwhile. This is when I experience his friendship in me at work. Let me illustrate with today's gospel. The Pharisees are planning to put Jesus to death. When he realizes this, he leaves that place. Instead of becoming angry, resentful, and self-righteous as I would, he simply goes out and continues the work of the Father to heal the sick. When I see Jesus taking a situation which would really tick me off and turn it into healing for others, that gives me courage and strength to do the same thing. He is my friend. He's the one who inspires me. He's the one who makes me happy. He's the one who's help, helping me get along with others. All of this flows into our heart from the Eucharist. Why would I not want to attend Mass every Sunday? I need him throughout the week. Granted, as a priest and a bishop, I have the privilege to celebrate Mass daily. But if I were not a priest, I could not wait for Sunday to come around because Jesus and the Mass are the only experiences that helps me make sense of the rest of the week. Jesus and the Eucharist are the only things that make the rest of the week worthwhile. Now, granted, the Church obliges us, the faithful as the Catholic Catechism tells us, to take part in the Divine Liturgy on Sundays and feast days and to be prepared by the Sacrament of Reconciliation to receive the Eucharist at least once a year, if possible, during the Easter season. Well, why does the Church say that? The Church knows that the Eucharist is necessary for our salvation. The Church knows we need the power of the Eucharist to overcome sin. And so the Church says the least we can do to make this possible is to come to Sunday Mass. So Sunday Mass is not a chore. It's not that on Sunday morning I got to go to Mass. It's on Sunday morning I get to go to Mass. And when you come to the Mass, bring everything with you, including your frustrations, including your shortcomings, your failures, including your feeling so inadequate and having so many limitations. That's why we come to Mass, because our limitness, limitless, limitless, no, our limitless, our limitedness, <laughs> see, I got it right, our limitedness has us cry out, cry out our shortcomings, our failures, our inability to love, cries out for that infinite love. So when we get into church, we ought to go, I'm so glad I'm here. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm here. Lord, I need you to love me. I need to receive all the love you want to give me today. And so, I give you everything, and I'm not going to hold any shortcomings back. <laughs> I give you everything because I want you to transform me. I need you to transform me in order that I can love you as you call me to love you. In order that I can receive that transforming love and then go out during the week and live that love. So, as Father said yesterday, we go from Mass to Mass. We go from the Mass on Sunday, and we go take that out into the streets, into our schools, into our families, into our uh, social activities, into our ball games. We take Christ with us because we need him. And then on Sunday we come back, and we come back to be, again, nurtured and transformed. Jesus said, truly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. Now I know some of you may find it difficult to get the Mass on Sunday because your parents may not go. Well, I got news for you. Oscar Wilde said, 
For what good are children if not to give good example to their parents? <laughs> One Sunday during the middle of mass, life teen mass was going on, and Father Burns had it. There was a car parked by the curb right outside of church. So I walked up. There was a gentleman, and he said, I'll change the name. He said, I'm here to pick up my daughter Mary. I think someday she'll get me back into church. And she did. <laughs> and she did. So, if your parents don't go to church, why don't you say to them, Mom and Dad, could we go to church this Sunday? Could we go to church this Sunday? And the worst they can do is say no. But you don't know how much you may impress them. I know again and again from parish experience, so many parents came to me and said, these teenagers are showing us up. If they're doing all of this, we need to do more. And I said, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> they're showing you the way. Now, say, for example, they just say, no, there's no way. Then ask them, can I call a friend of mine? Because I just want to go to church. And I'm sure they will let you. I'm sure they will let you. And so, do whatever you can to come to your friend Jesus because he's the one who is making you whole. So I pray that in this Mass, you offer yourself as a sacrifice with all with Jesus and make a total gift of yourself to the Father. Nothing, nothing you could do would bring the Father more joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.